This is Performers Wanted. Welcome back to the show, y'all. Today we're going to be talking to Lucy Moran, who you might know from the recent Western production of The Hills of California. Let's pop in and see how she's doing. Okay, Lucy, hi. Hi. <laughs> how are you doing? I'm really good, thank you. How are you? I am doing pretty good. Thank you for coming in. It's about four o'clock over there for you? Yeah, 4 p.m. Cool. Where uh, Tell everyone where you're coming from, where you're... Uh, dialing in from today i'm in london right now west london so yeah nice nice <laughs> nice uh on this particular show you're the you're the furthest away uh yeah that we have interviewed and uh yeah it's a it you know we've had a few uh, technical <laughs> technical uh difficulties uh going in i don't know if that has anything to do with it or maybe it's just me <laughs> just <who knows. laughs> Yeah, so today uh, we are here with Lucy today. Um, Lucy, why don't you uh, introduce yourself to everyone? I'm Lucy. I'm 20 years old. I'm from the UK, from London. And yeah, I, I'm an actress, singer, dancer, um, working. <laughs> <laughs> working. Work, I mean, working is an, an understatement. Because we're definitely yeah. talking about something today. Definitely going to be talking about it. You, you are currently on West End, are you not? Yeah. So I was in The Hills of California, which is a play written by Jez Butterworth, um, directed by Sam Mendes, and it closed on Saturday. So I just finished six month run mm -hmm. in the West End. Six month run in the West End, but it was in the West End. For anyone who doesn't know. Uh, what the West End is basically that is uh, that is pretty professional out there in London. Um, we hear about it kind of all the time because for us it's Broadway, but like we hear it's like okay Broadway or West End. So you made your professional West End debut. Is that is that right? I did. Yeah. Nice, nice. I do want to hear about that. I want to hear about that. Um, a lot actually because i'm very very curious but uh first we're going to uh we're gonna take it back just a little bit we'll take it back just a little bit and uh we'll talk a little bit about where you started in uh theater in general um how old were you when you started yeah so i mean i've been doing dance lessons since i was like two like i was in ballet tap jazz all of that like after school and stuff um my mum teaches acting and musical theatre so I did a lot of that through her growing up lambda exams I don't know if you have them in the US just like yeah just like after school clubs that kind of vibe and then the stuff I did during school um pantomimes do you have pantomimes in the US I think it's a UK thing Hmm. Uh, but what, is, what is that? What is that? It's like it's like a Christmas show, and they happen like all over the country. And it's like for kids. There's like lots of singing, dancing, comedy, and it's always like a fairy tale. But it's like a Christmas show, basically. Um. So as a kid, I was in them, like dancing and singing in the ensemble. So that was probably my first experience, like on a stage. I did. Um panto in a theatre called the hexagon in reading has about it's quite a big theatre um but yeah i did that from like the age of eight till i was maybe like 15 every year at christmas and i did dance competitions um and stuff like that just growing up and then when i was probably 14 or 15 i decided that i wanted to train full time in musical theatre so um in in the UK we have GCSEs at 16 which is like you have to be in school till you're 16 and then you can go on and do like A levels or university or whatever you want to do so basically I decided that when I was 16 I wanted to audition for musical theatre schools so I auditioned I think for seven different schools around London there are like the big names that people have heard of schools like Arts Ed, Mount View, 
Um, and I ended up getting into all seven schools and I was offered scholarships at lots of them. But I ended up going to Erdang. I ended up going to a school called the Erdang Academy, which is in Islington. And I was on a full scholarship there doing the three-year diploma. So I started that at 16, which actually was in September 2020. So the first year was half online, half in the building. I was like Zoom calling, doing ballet classes. Yeah. and But basically that's very, very full on. Like it's the equivalent of uni, but um, you're doing like the days were like from half past eight in the morning till like 7 p.m. at night, five days a week. Um, so I did that. It was like all kinds of dancing, singing, technical singing training, acting lessons, um, assessments. We had big summer shows. And then I did all of that. And then basically in third year, the idea is to finish and get signed by an agent. So... They have lots of different like opportunities. They have lots of casting directors like come in and watch you sing and watch you dance. Um, you put on a big end of year musical where lots of agents will come and watch and they'll get in contact with people that they're interested in. Um, and I was lucky enough. I got my agent through one of the casting directors came in and heard me sing and basically recommended me to a agent friend of his. And so I. I'm signed with Belfield and Ward. They're an agency in London. And basically, yeah, they emailed me and they were like, we're interested in you. Can you send us some tapes? So then I sent them some tapes of myself, like singing and dancing and acting. And then I went in for a meeting and then I signed with them. And then that's basically, I graduated and they've been sending me up for like loads of auditions. Because in, um, I don't know, in the US, there's like a lot more open call and like opportunity to audition for stuff without an agent, like when you're self-represented. But in London and definitely to like the West End, it's very, very like agent based. There's there's less of that, I think. So yeah, I just started like going to loads of auditions. Um and I got an audition for Hills of California and that was the first job I booked. So yeah. Wait, 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 wait. So Hills of California was the first job you booked? Yes. I auditioned for lots of jobs before then, and I got to rounds and rounds and, like, final for lots of things. But Hills of California was the first job that I was offered the job. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Wow. I didn't actually know that part. Because normally, <laughs> normally there's, like, a bit of a journey. I, I know there's still a journey because, like, you have finaled for uh, different jobs. And I know how, like, exciting it is to get close to them and like to get there finally and then maybe not get it but then your first job that you booked is on west end and that is crazy that's a different story than what we've been telling here uh so you get the you get the call for for hills and uh what's the what's that feeling like like how, how does it feel for you I mean, it was like, it was amazing. I, yeah, I was so, so excited about it. In the finals, there was 10 of us and I knew they were looking for six people out of 10 of us. So I was like, I spent the whole, I think it was two weeks from the day of the final to the day that I got the call. So I was just like, spent the whole time just thinking about it. I like couldn't stop. Um, I was really, really happy with like how the final went. So I was really, really hopeful. And I was working in a bar um, down the road, like waitressing. And then I got the phone call and I like went up to my boss and I was like, I have to, I needed to go to the toilet. Like I have to go for a break. And then I went outside and like picked up the phone and like, oh my God, he was like, oh my God, you booked it. And then I like immediately called my mum and told her. <laughs> I'm so excited. I was like jumping up and down in like the smoking area of this bar. Um, yeah, <laughs> it was. Yeah, un unbelievable. I was so, so, so happy. Well, yeah, I mean, this is the first thing. This is the first thing out the gate. This is like, like, th this is something that people wish for, people, ex you know, not expect, but, you know, they really, like, if they think they're going to, like, jump into it and they're going to final for things, they're, they're going to book it. Or maybe someone from the outside looks at it and they're just like, okay, uh, 
you're on West End now. We always knew you're going to be on West End. You're super talented, but it, it's normally pretty like rough. But you like he crushed it. You definitely must have crushed it. Um, <laughs> if you like jumped right into it, uh, we will jump a little bit into the process of Hills of California. Could you uh, could you give the listeners a bit of what that show is about without spoiling anything? But what is it about? So the show is set in Blackpool in 1976, and it's about four sisters who have come to their childhood home because their mother is dying of cancer. And so basically, it's like the the moment where all the siblings come back together for maybe a really, really long time since having seen each other, you know, to support each other through um, something like that. And essentially... Um, during the show it flashes back to them as kids in this house it's um, a guest house on the Blackpool seafront so when they flash back to the 1950s that's really when Blackpool was like really booming in terms of the seaside town it was really really popular like people would come on holiday and stuff from all over the UK to Blackpool in the 50s and then since then it sort of declined but so it flashes back to the 1950s with these four girls as young girls in the house. And um, yeah, they have this like Andrew's Sisters tribute act that they're trying to achieve. And their mum, mm-hmm. Veronica, is like coaching them um, in this act. And they're trying to get it out there and perform. And their dream is to, you know, perform in the big theatres in London and um, in Blackpool. And yeah, it just kind of explores their childhood and where they are now. Okay. 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 Yeah. I mean, that sounds really interesting. And uh, what character do you play? So I play a character called Patty, um, who is the daughter of one of the sisters. So I appear at the beginning in 1976 when my mom like comes on stage and I'm her daughter. And then I also covered two of the sisters in the 50s, if that makes sense, like as their younger selves. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, so as far as this character goes, is there is there anything that you've probably like pulled from like yourself to play this character? Like, is there any piece of you, any piece of Lucy that is in this character? Um, that you relate to, that you could pull from as you're portraying her. Um, how like how basically were you getting in the mind of her? Yeah, I mean, um, the character Patty that I played wasn't too. It's not too big a character. There's not like a lot of emotional journey. She's just in this one scene. Um, and it's definitely the comedic relief at the beginning of the play when you like introduce the mum's upstairs dying there's a nurse and then our family comes in and it's like comedic relief and basically I came with my my brother and um we're all really moody because we've been in this car like this really hot car driving for like six seven hours um and I just go on and just like tease my brother and like wind him up so I guess I mean I've definitely experienced that in my life I have lots of siblings as well so Mm -hmm. um you know winding them up and and having fun just messing messing around really just messing around yeah definitely there I yeah I have a sibling as well I have a younger sister so I definitely know what that's like um in in that sense wow I'm still like I'm still on um that you then with this is your first job i mean the audition process i'm gonna jump back to the audition process because i want to know how long it was i mean you know this is a it's a, a newer show and whether it's new or not it's still on west end you, you know it, that's that's crazy that's a huge accomplishment um how long was that audition process for you yeah, so I mean, it was different for me because before Hills of California was the first play I ever auditioned for. Before that, I was definitely doing a lot more musicals, 
things like Wicked, Shrek, um, you know, the big, and for them, there's more round because it's like dancing, singing material. Like I think for Shrek, I did five or six rounds till I got to the, the final. But for Hills in California, it it was less actually. Um, and I think it's just the way that, that plays work. But it started with self-tape. Um, and when we first self-taped for it, it was really like under wraps. I think the email I got, the the subject line was like unannounced West End play. Like we didn't get the title. We didn't get the writer, like nothing. We couldn't say Jez was doing it. Sam Mendes was directing it. Like we didn't know anything. It just kind of said um, Blackpool accent. And like that was it. And then we were sent um, some side. So we had like one side of acting to do in the Blackpool accent and then we were sent um a side of like singing the young girls sing Boogie Boogie Bugle Boy the song in the show so we were sent a sample of that like maybe 16 bars and we had to record ourselves singing that and then we had to submit our own song as well um what did I sing I sung My Grand Plan from the Percy Jackson musical Percy Jackson the Lightning Thief Mm -hmm. so basically yeah, I had to film those three things and submit them, which I did. And then I think maybe a week later, I got an email to come in and do an in-person dance call cool. because the younger also tapped in the show. So I went into Pineapple Dance Studios, which is like probably the most popular um, studios for auditions in London, it's in Covent Garden. And yeah, I think we were in the tap call for maybe an hour and a half. We just learned this tap routine and performed it um Uh but it there was like loads of different like there was such a mix of abilities in the room because two out of the four girls tapped they were just kind of seeing who could do what the routine was like very simple but you know it was about the style of the tap as well as like what you could do with your feet and so yeah oh and they also like got us to skip at the end because at that point they were thinking about putting like skipping with skipping ropes in the show so like we did this whole pack routine and then they were like oh quickly can we just see each of these skips so we had to like sign in the middle and skip with a skipping rope it was really funny um but yeah and then i think maybe a week after that i got an email and it was the final so there were only three rounds but the final was an entire day um we went in in the morning and basically we were sent beforehand because the young girls sing everything in four part harmony we were sent a uh, sample of Boogie Wiggy Bugle Boy with all four lines and told to learn all four lines of like the harmony. So in the morning we went in and we kind of warmed up and we went over the four lines and then they were like trying, they were putting us into groups and trying each of our voices on the different lines and trying different mix of like voices and how they blend together. So they were just like mixing us all up, seeing where they liked people seeing whose voices blended with whose voices best, if that makes sense. Mm. Um, and then in the afternoon, yeah, and then in the afternoon, we did some more acting. So there were, we were all sent, I think, two scenes, um, and they swapped us around, got us to read for different characters, put us in different groups. Again, just seeing who worked well with who. Um, but yeah, it was quite funny because obviously they're all supposed to be sisters. So, like, we walked in and all of us looked, like, the same, like, so, so similar. So that definitely played a part in it. But, yeah, we were there in that venue on the final day, I think, from 10 o'clock in the morning till, like, 4 o'clock in the afternoon. And then they said um, they'd send, because the associate director, Zoe, was in that ring on the final, but Sam Sam Mendes wasn't. So they said they'd film everything, send it all to Sam, make sure he, um, you know, had, had a decision, and then... It was about two weeks after that that I got the call. Okay. And um, so I, I mentioned, um, or you mentioned, you know, singing uh, Boogie Woogie Bugle Boy, um, which is iconic song. And you had to learn all four points uh, for that, that track, which, I mean, this, this, I mean, the song is a mouthful. Like it, 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 it doesn't stop. Um, and how was how was that? I was just, I was kind of stuck on that where it was just like, you had to learn all four of the, the harmonies. Like how, how was that for you at least? Yeah. I mean, 
um luckily for the audition it was only like a small bit it was maybe like 16 bars that we had to learn so it wasn't too much but I we had we were sent like um recordings of the piano like bashing out each line so I really just listened to them on repeat on repeat um and I can sight read sheet, sheet music like a little bit and we were able to like hold it in front of us on the final so I was kind of looking at it and you can see like when it goes down and up and like kind of work it out <laughs> what I was doing but in the same um topic of that in the show I covered two of the girls and obviously they sing two different harmonies during Bigger 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 Boy and they dance two different like things as well so that was definitely like a whole thing during rehearsals trying to learn both and they were so similar but also different and trying to like dance and sing and remember which one you're doing. Um, that that was definitely probably one of the like most challenging parts. Yeah, but I love that song well. It's such a good song. <laughs> it's such a good song. So um, with that type of song, did you, so you sing that song within the show. Is that correct? Yeah. Yes. And so all the music, is all the, music within that style is all the music um from that era essentially yeah it definitely is because um yeah most of the singing and dancing is done by the young girls in the 50s and obviously they're trying to do this andrew sisters tribute act so it's all that style of music there's big reasonable boy straighten up and fly right nat king cole a lot of his stuff um and then even when the sisters in the 70s sing, they're, it's, they're reminiscent of themselves in the 50s. So it's the same, um, yeah, it's the same music. Mm. <laughs> nice. I love that idea. I love that idea. Um, and it's really creative. But yes, we we have to get into talking about so Sam Mendes. So how was it working with, with Sam Mendes? Like, we're all wondering that. How, yeah. how was it? working with it was absolutely incredible I mean he he's just brilliant and I guess on the first day like I wasn't sure what to expect um because obviously I knew how big of a name he was and how incredible all his work is um but in terms of like he walks into the room and he's actually like he has so much authority and presence but he's quite silent like he's not someone that will walk in and be like, okay, yeah, no, 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 no. Like he has all this, everyone's like stood waiting for him. And he just like conducts the room with this presence, but it's just like insane. And um, I remember specific times like where he would just say, okay, can you guys just do that bit like one more time? Um, and then I'll know exactly like he was like, oh, something, something needs to change. Can you just do it again? And, and then it, it will come to me. And then they'd like do the little snippet of the scene again. And there'd be points where we'd, he'd be sat in silence. Like we'd all be sat there like waiting, waiting for him. And then he'd just come out with like the most insane thing. <laughs> there was like um, one day where we changed the ending of the show. We were going to sing um, the song, The Hills of California at the end of the show but it changed during rehearsals and I remember like the moment that he had that idea um or the idea of how the show should end and we were all just like waiting there in silence for, like what, what's he gonna say and he came out with it and everyone was like oh my goodness <laughs> he's just brilliant he just see he's able to look at everything like he's able to sit back and like see everything as a whole and it will just come to him like yeah yeah, just want yeah, just literally is like calculating, just calculating. It's like something's wrong, something's off, something. Like, I don't know what it is yet, but something's off. You guys do that one more time. Still haven't find it yet. Yeah, something's off. Leave real quick. Just look. I got it. It's just like exactly that. Like we have to like switch up. And then everyone switches up, and then all of a sudden, it's just like everyone here's like, oh wow, yeah, really. And all of a sudden, like you've just. I didn't hear it before, but like it's now it's like so much better. Um, so that that definitely must have been incredible. Um, you never had to 
audition in front of him or you did have to audition in front of him? Maybe that, I missed that part. No, yeah. So the um, associate, assistant director was there at the final, but Sam wasn't. But they were all filmed. So all of our singing and acting on the finals was filmed and they were all sent to Sam. And then he had like a final say before we were casted. Right. So you book it, you show up on the first day of school and, <laughs> and Sam Mendes is in there. Yeah. And it was my birthday. The first day of rehearsals, it was my birthday. And he sang happy birthday with everyone to me. It was me. your birthday? Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. It was your birthday? <laughs> You're like, absolutely. This is this is going to be the best birthday of all time. Uh, <laughs> it was. Uh, so that must have been that. So funny. So funny. Um, so let's go back a little bit. We'll get back to Hills, but let's go back a little bit um to your past career. Cause I noticed we, you know, we heard about Shrek, we heard about Wicked, we heard about um so as far as like how did you get involved with I'll start with Shrek. How did you get involved with Shrek? Yeah, so it's from going to Erdine. Erdine's like a, a very good, very well known um school in london and basically what they do is they have kind of an in-house agent that is able to put you up for auditions during your third year and then at the end of your third year you sign with a different agent basically um so i they put you put you up for like loads and loads of things um i've been up for lots of west end uk tours workshops random things but shrek was one that i really really loved and enjoyed the audition process and that that happened like at the beginning of 2023 i think um Mm -hmm. yeah and i was just submitted by the erdang agent and i had to go in there was a dance call um and then i was recalled from that i sung my own song to the panel recalled from that on a different day i did some material I sung a song from the show and did scenes from the show and then I was recalled again and there was another dance call where we learned a tap dance and a different dance and then I was recalled again and then I did more um material song from the show freak flag it was and scenes from the show and I sung my own song as well and that was the final day and then I was on hold for like a month after the final because basically I heard lots of people had had yeses and lots of people had noes and they said to me oh like we just want you on hold because there were other people who could have turned it down were like in like had offered been offered Shrek and also had been offered something else and so they were keeping me on hold in case they needed spaces to fill and then I waited for like a month two months and then they were like no we don't need you (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> no, we don't need you. isn't that like that's that is actually insane i've heard stories like this before where it's just like um you go through the the whole deal you go through the whole deal you know and these audition processes are so long and there's so much that they have you do for each one and then like you wait for however a long time I've heard even longer than that before and that's ridiculous and then you get the call or just like you got it or no nah, you didn't I was like yeah I probably could have known that like two weeks ago but you know <laughs> just take your time take your time um but yeah but that was that's still a really like awesome uh process to do that whole uh that whole process and final for it you know as well and you know, I love the idea that like in your school, like they're putting you up for stuff. Like that's incredibly that's necessary. Like if like if you're studying for a specific, like specific profession, especially this one, uh, you I mean you need that audition uh, experience, and you know that agent honestly that you know that agent experience too. You know how that works, and you're getting that in school, and I definitely am sure that you know that that definitely like prepared you for finally booking and booking so uh you know so early out you know with hills because it's not really like that out here like we're like we're taught this stuff we are taught 
um, what might happen. Um, and we maybe like we'll mock it, but it's not often that like we'll actually in the school, like in the program, we're just like, oh yeah, so we're going to be your agent too, you know, until like you can find your own agent. That would be so helpful out here if that was the, the case, but it's not. And it's right, you know, you said it earlier about open calls. So it like it is agent based out here, but we do have a lot of open call um, opportunities out here. Um, but they're not ideal because since they are open calls, that means anyone can come. So like you might not even get in the room. You might not even get in the room. You just be waiting. Um, so definitely keep doing what you're doing out there in London. Tell <laughs> me what you're doing out here. Well, yeah. Cause this um, is definitely, um, yeah, where well, I think we're, we're shorted a little bit when it comes to, to that. Um, you already had, you know, like a couple situations where you finaled before like booking. We definitely have to talk about Wicked. I think you mentioned Wicked. Yeah. So yeah. that process, how was that? Um, well, the thing is, I, I've never got to finals for Wicked. I, it was quite at the start. But the thing about Wicked is that they kind of, obviously you have the leads, but I look too young to play any of them really. And then ensemble wise, they have, like half of the dance ensemble and half of the singing ensemble. And obviously everyone does everything, but like in terms of the audition process, when you're put forward for ensemble, you are either put forward for dancer and the singer. And I don't necessarily like fall directly into one of those categories. I'm very like across the board. So I, I think I was submitted for the UK tour for a dancer first. So I went into that and I did, um, the dance call where you learn the dance routine. There were loads and loads of people. Um, whereas I've also been submitted for Wicked West End as a singer first ensemble. So I went into that and I sung my song for the panel. Um, and that's more like to cover the the lead roles as well. So I've been into both sides, mm -hmm. but yeah, I haven't got anywhere with that yet. Will come. <laughs> it, and listen, it it will come. Um, and you know, you got in the room, which is more than a lot of folks can say, um, that you got in the room and you finaled for stuff and performed on West End. Um, that is something that will definitely like help get you into more rooms. Um, when the time comes, you know, um, when you have that under your belt, um, yeah, so Hills of California um in you know just recently closed um you have a six month run on west end um your overall experience on that show and on west end um like you, you you're probably still like elated after everything's done right like it's 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 a dream for anyone right um how do you how are you feeling right now yeah i mean it was just so much fun. Like, I just absolutely loved every single second. Um, yeah, and I loved the job. Um, but the people were, like, so, so great. The entire company was so lovely. We had so much fun backstage. We played games. We, you know, gossiped every single show. Like, it was brilliant. So that's probably the biggest thing that, like, was the biggest change. Because, obviously, when you're on a any kind of job, you go from seeing this group of people almost every single day I mean every single day like spending your whole day with them for six months eight months if you include the rehearsals beforehand and then suddenly you don't see them at all so that's definitely like the hardest thing I think um and yeah of course like I miss the show but that's the nature of the industry I guess just on to like the next thing right 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 um and well yeah out here it's a it's it's eight shows a week. Is that the same um, for West End? Eight shows a week is what you'd be doing. Yeah, we did eight shows. Yeah, eight shows, um, which is great. Like, cause this, this, it's a, it, it is a a lot. It is a lot. What did you do in your downtime? Did you have any downtime? Yeah, I mean, 
luckily for me like the tracks that I covered in the show were a lot so I had to make sure that I was like on top of that in terms of knowledge but the track that I played every night Patty the character Patty wasn't actually that physically demanding um I'm just there's just one scene at the beginning and then I do some like booth singing where I stood in the wings and I sung whilst the other girls were like on stage just to like amp it up a bit but other than that I was lucky enough to have quite a lot of downtime during the show um and I I started making TikToks because I was bored um so me and my friends in the dressing room we made loads of TikToks dances day in the life silly things and I before booking Hills of California because obviously I had to move to London and in order to pay my rent, I was kind of running around like a crazy person. I was working in hospitality full time. And then on my days off, I was like going to dance classes, singing lessons, acting, the gym, like trying to keep. Because in my head, although hospitality was like my full time job, my full time job's like performing. And so my days off like weren't days off. They were the days where I actually got to do the actual job that I wanted to do. So in a way, Booking Hills of California was like a little bit of a break where I could actually take the time before, you know, on the one show days when I didn't have to be at the theatre until half past five, I could take the time during the day to go to dance class, hang out with my friends, have singing lessons, socialise, all of that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is See, this is what the show is all about. You brought this up. You brought up that like preparing for the show you were also working uh <laughs> you were also working you were but you were preparing for a west end show this is the dream but you're also working um which is a reality for a, a lot of performers um you know so it's first of all it's incredible that you were doing both um and making that work um and for uh, for us in the 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 states you said you were working in hospitality yeah i was like a waitress so what is that job and deal? yeah so um i was really quite lucky there's like a bar um down the road near where i live it's very close to like the bbc and the itv studios so we had lots of people they're like the big channels um we had lots of people come in like it's quite a nice bar but it's also quite chill and basically they're so understaffed they work doubles I was pretty much working four 12-hour shifts a week I'd have my phone in my back pocket and it like counts your steps and I was doing like 20,000 steps a shift so like four of those a week um but it was really it was really nice like um and the important thing was that, that my managers like understood that I was a performer and I kind of went into it explaining to them, like if I had an audition, there were instances where I turned around and was like, I'm so sorry, but I've got this audition through tomorrow. I'm not, I'm not going to come to work. And they kind of understood that and they were like, it's okay. Like, so it was a very nice for that reason. Okay. So it was like, so at least it was, they were, they were understanding. I see there's a lot of uh, employers who aren't particularly understanding, like, Hey, I, I got to go to rehearsal. You know, I got to go to singing lessons. I got to go to dance class. Like they, you know, they're like, uh like really do you need to it's like rush hour right now do we like you know people are about to come in right after church we need to <laughs> um but uh yeah that's a that's thing do you still if you don't mind me asking do you still work or you are so after the show like the shows i'm just taking my little yeah i mean um I am going to Greece on holiday next week. So I've already, I'm going, and then when I get back from Greece, I'm going back to work in the bar. So I've already emailed them and I asked to go back and it's right down from my house. So I've been in since like drinking. I know them all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're just like, yeah, you know, I'm just letting you know, I just got done with a West End show and I'm going on vacation, but I'll see you guys when I get, <laughs> get back. They're like, yeah, fine. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, I love that. You definitely deserve it. You definitely deserve it. Um, is there anything? Do you have anything coming up? Do you have any auditions coming up or anything like that that you might be preparing for? Uh, yeah, I mean, I towards the end of Hills of California, I was auditioning, um, like whilst doing the show, so that was a lot sometimes. Um, 
with different things happening. There's always things going on. I have a self tape that I have to do tomorrow. So when we finish this, I'll be learning line. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, yeah. Just carrying on like that. I'm, it's nice that it's opened the doors. Hills of California definitely has because training in musical theater, sometimes it's hard to get into the spaces where they're looking for actors. Because I did say to my agent, like, I love musical theatre and I also love straight acting. But sometimes when all you've done is musical theatre, you know, it's hard to get into the acting world because people think, oh, she, she's a musical theatre person. But definitely now that I've done Hills of California, I'm being submitted for more series and film stuff as well as West End and tours and stuff like that. Right. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Um... You, you mentioned you were like you were like auditioning while doing the show. I can't imagine. <laughs> I can't imagine how you would fit that in to doing that. But the the crazy thing is, so Hills of California was a new show, right? Remember it was a new show? So we like wow, we didn't even talk about this a little bit, but like, yes, you made it to West End. This was your uh professional debut, but you also originated something on West End. Yeah, I mean it's amazing. Like Yeah, I um I've been to, to Waterstones, the big bookstore, and I bought the play and I have my name in like the front of it, which is very, very cool. <laughs> that is incredible. That is incredible. This is this is what's gonna happen. This is what's gonna happen. I'm hoping to find a version of this play. I'm gonna send it to you. I need you to sign it and send it back to me because I need to be able to say, "Hey, I yeah, I found her when you know." Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, because that that is that's incredible. This has been so cool to sort of like hear your story in this and hear your your training and hear everything a. a about what you're you're doing um you're definitely a, a star on the rise 100 yeah. percent. like you know and i definitely had to ask about those those eight shows i'm gonna i'm interviewing someone later on this this uh this week who's on broadway i'm gonna ask them too I'm like the eight shows <laughs> like well, how is that done it's like are you okay <laughs> just make sure you're okay after anything well you're going to greece so you're going on vacation so you're 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 chilling yeah <laughs> after that um so i guess you know for you this is you know a great start for you do you have an ultimate end goal that you want to make too or like have you lived the dream like what where do you see yourself if you i yeah i mean i definitely have lots and lots of dream roles within musical theater that i would love to achieve um classic things like Alpha Burn Wicked. Um, I'd love to play Catherine in Newsies. Loads of these big shows. Um, Roxy in Chicago. Obviously, I'm like too young to do these things right now. But like, <laughs> you know, those are like dreams that I would love to achieve. But really, because coming out of musical theatre um, college, I thought that I'd just be doing musical theatre. Like I never would have guessed I'd be doing a Jez Butterworth, Sam Mendes play on the West End. Like, and I think it just goes to show like, I really don't know what could happen. And I'd love if the opportunity came to get into TV, to get into film. I'm just like taking everything, everything I can get. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I mean, you're by the BBC and then like as quiet as it's kept, you know, the BBC is actually a station that us in the States, we watch all the time. We, <laughs> we love the BBC. It is so awesome. We, <laughs> We're talking about, we're watching Luther, we're watching Jekyll, you know, we're watching Graham Norton, we're watching, like, you know, all the time. <laughs> it's reached us. It's reached us. So it probably won't be too long before, you know, Hills of California actually reaches us too um, in some stage. And, you know, I, I hope, hope severely that you are a part of that production when it happens. Yeah. Um, so if anyone wanted to become a fan of you, uh, who's <laughs> this? How would they be able to find you? Where can they find you? Yeah, I mean, um, I'm on Instagram. My Instagram handle is, make sure I say this right. You can follow me on Instagram. It's lucy.c.moran. And also on TikTok, because I post loads of TikToks. I do vlogs, stand the life, singing, dancing. And that's also Lucy 
C. Moran. Lucy C. Moran. Okay. Lucy C. Moran, you've heard it here. You remember the name. Remember the face. <laughs> <laughs> She's already on her way. Lucy, this was great. It was great hearing from you and great hearing what you've accomplished so far at such a, a young age. And you, I mean, you said a few of your dream roles where it was like, oh, you're too young to to play them. I mean, I I, I, I definitely see a Catherine in Newsies at least. I would love to do that's like my number one. <laughs> yeah. If you, yeah, I can I'm seeing I'm looking at you right now. And then like even, you know, even with like Alphaba, you know, um in all actuality, like if you were to play that character, I'm like, you would definitely be great in it. We'll get you green. At least we'll get you up there a little bit. We'll get we'll give you like a Nessa Rose and then like just kind of <laughs> bring you up. Exactly that. Yeah, you know you're pretty you're pretty big in musical theater buff. So I'm going to do something with you. I got a segment for you, real quick. We've answered some of the questions already, but we're going to actually um, bring you into a, a sort of a game that we I've played with some of the <laughs> some of the the the, the guests. Um, and it's not just lipsy crazy. It's called like a light, like a lightning round. So basically, you're just going to answer these questions as you like they pop in your head some of them you've already answered if there isn't an answer um then just say there isn't one um and we'll go from there you ready okay okay yeah okay it was like okay all right all right first one is your vocal range my vocal range last time we checked it's e e3 to after written down C, C6, C6. Yeah, belting, I can belt up to an F5. I think that's true. I need to check that. <laughs> you check that. Like immediately as you leave, you go to the keyboard and you're just like, let me just make sure. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You've already said this before, but your dream role? Yeah, definitely. Catherine and Newsies, Rocks in Chicago, all of those things. Okay. Favorite role you have played? Well, we. At my early college, in the summer show, we kind of, we don't do a whole musical. We do like snippets of numbers from different musicals. And we did do King of New York from Newsies. And I played Catherine in that. So I loved that. And like we also did like a condensed version of Chicago where I played Roxy. So those would be my two answers. Those are your two answers. All right. You've heard it here. Um, and let's see. Last time you auditioned. Um, it was last Thursday. Last Thursday, I had an in-person audition for a play in the West End. Nice. All right. And your your favorite show, just in general, your favorite show, the same for for the watch. That's such a hard question. <laughs> um, I went to see Newsies. It was on recently in uh and it was absolutely incredible. Also, I would say I've seen Come From Away twice, and I absolutely loved that. Like, it made me so emotional. Um, it was brilliant. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Uh, favorite theater song? God, these are hard questions. These are really hard questions. Um, what would I say? I love a lot of the soundtrack from Waitress. I listen to it all the time. Um, obviously Jenna's solo songs but also like the ones that they sing together what's the one that she sings with um, It Takes Two I think from Waitress and The Negative from Waitress they're all great songs <laughs> just Waitress just, just yeah. Waitress <laughs> favorite theater song Waitress um, so if you were able to choose and there was no um, boundaries based on the show you were auditioning for would you? what would your go to audition song be? Go to audition song. I sing Astonishing from Little Woman. So I like everything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Okay. This is going to be a fun question. So, because you already mentioned that, you know, you're, you're a fan of Chicago or Roxy from Chicago. Um, which one of the Mary Murderesses do you identify with the most? Pop, Six, Wish, uh, uh, Cicero, or Lipschitz? I don't know. I know the answer to that question. I love them all. What do I say? Which is the one who ran into my knife? 
I love that one. He ran into my knife 10 times. Uh, okay, squish. That's the most iconic one. <laughs> yes. There we go. You heard it here. Um, if you can have dinner with any musical theater performer, alive or dead, who would be? Question. Who am I? I don't know. People, I mean, I'm like a huge Lucy Jones fan. I've seen her in loads of stuff here in the UK. I think she's incredible. Um, but obviously, like, you've got like that icon. Oh, I really don't know. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> who would I, who would I do? Just someone like really, really iconic, Patti LuPone, someone who I could ask. For advice. <laughs> Definitely. Uh and if you could bring a show back as a revival, which would it be? Hmm. Good question. Um, I would have said a chorus line. I love that show, but it's actually just come back to the UK. I think it's doing a tour. Um, that's brilliant. I'm really excited to see that. What else? What else would come? I don't know. What else do I love? I have a list on my phone, actually, of um, my dream world and musicals that I want to be in. <laughs> <laughs> Where is it? I was looking at it this morning. Here we go. Um, oh, yeah, I'm in love with Bonnie and Clyde as well, that musical. But that went on a UK tour and then it had to be cancelled halfway through because okay. the production and money and something. Right. Um, which is the same. But yeah, maybe um, Spring Awakening, mm-hmm. the great show. Well, that's a, yeah, that's a good answer. That's definitely a good answer. That could definitely use a revival. Yeah. Um, yeah, last I checked, there was supposed to be like a movie for it. Um, yeah. But, yeah, but. Uh, and also, there are, um, Beetlejuice hasn't come to the UK yet. That's yeah, definitely that's something that I'd want to. Soon. I mean, I'm sure it's in the works, but definitely that. That yeah, definitely is it. It tours a lot here. Like it's it's been here in my city in the last couple of years. You know, like five different times. Like it just kind of keeps coming back. Here. Yeah. Um. So yeah, it'll it'll definitely make its <laughs> way out there eventually. It's a very very popular show. Um. Yeah. Lucy Moran, this has been this has been great. It's been nice talking to you, nice chatting with you, um, and uh, yeah, thank you for like bearing with yeah, because you yeah, you're the furthest, so there were some technical difficulties, but <laughs> we'll definitely work them out. Um, yeah, definitely. It's been so great. It's been so great chatting. Yeah, no problem. So I'm gonna go ahead and sign out here, and we are out. <laughs>